Hi folks, Tim here again with Tim'sClass.com. Today we're going to discuss measuring devices. Uh, I didn't say measuring tape because we have all kinds of different measuring devices and we'll go over the ones that we have here. There's, there's a multitude more than what we actually have here, but we're just going to cover some of the basics right now that get used most commonly. Uh, let's start right here. This is a fiberglass tape. Uh, this is actually a 300 footer and you'll notice it's got measurements on it. Uh, it's got a hook right here. Typically this is used by footing people, people that do foundations, something of that nature. They'll set some rebar in the ground. They'll stick this over the rebar and they'll pull this to whatever they need to get it to. And you can see everything's divided up. You'll notice on this tape measure though, there are no sixteenths. Everything is an eighth of an inch. And they do that because, when, frankly, when you're doing a, a foundation of some sort, uh, a sixteenth of an inch is kind of irrelevant. So that's a fiberglass tape. We also have pretty much the same thing. This is a hundred footer, but instead of fiberglass, it's steel. And this is actually preferred by most people in the uh, foundation business for the simple fact there's no stretch. This is a steel tape measure. So it has zero stretch to it makes it uh, just a whole lot more accurate. Also, once again, if you look at it closely, it's broken down into eighth of an inch instead of sixteenths. All right, this is actually a measuring wheel. You can see it breaks down, you can fold up, put it away somewhere. This will just pop up. Uh, this particular brand is made by Luffman. And if you look here real close, we can get around some of this dirt. This is where you reset it after you've used it. So let's say I was trying to measure the road frontage on my lot. This is the tool that I would use. Much easier for measuring really long distance and not getting perfectly accurate, but close enough. So I would start it on the corner pin and then just walk it. And as I walk it down, it's taking a measurement. You see from there to there, we have a measurement of eight feet. It looks like eight foot and about 11 inches, if you can see that. All right, and then to clear it, we just once again click it to zero and it goes back to zero. Okay, let's talk about this. This is a little digital caliper. Machinists typically use this. Uh, you can see we turn it on here. I can zero it out right there. And then I can do it in either millimeters or inches for what we're doing right now. Let's zero it back out. Let's go to inches and you can see as I start to pull this out, it'll give me an exact measurement in inches. All right, you see it climbing up as we go. If I wanted to convert that to millimeters, I just click the millimeter and I'd say, okay, that's 20.99 millimeters, which is the same as 0.82 uh, of an inch. So once again, this gives you a digital readout used primarily by machinists and people that need to be exact on everything that they do. Last but not least, the probably the most used measuring device there is, is the tape measure. Uh, you'll notice I'm holding here a Stanley 25 foot. This is kind of the industry standard. Uh, this is the old school tape measure used by old timers for the most part reason Stanley got to be such a popular brand in the old days, Stanley had a 100% money back guarantee, replacement guarantee. So if there was any reason, I remember when I first started building, if this tore up for any reason, it didn't matter what you did to it, whose fault it was, you just take the old one that was tore up into the store and they hand you a new one, no questions asked. So that's how it got to be probably the most popular tape measure there was. Since then, they've obviously modified that replacement rule, but uh, it's still popular with old timers. If you look closely at it, there's a lot of different things I want to show you here. First of all, you'll notice that the end of this tends to move. And some people think it was just not manufactured correctly and should be tight. But the actual truth is that gives you a perfect measurement whether you're pulling or pushing. So if you'll notice the width of this little hook right here, that's the exact amount of movement of this hook. So that way, if I'm pulling it, it moves to account for that hook. 
if I'm pushing it, it moves to account for that hook. So you see that once again, watch, watch the movement action when I pull. All right, and when I push, it does the same thing, okay? You'll notice this tape measure is broken up into sixteenths, which is the standard that we use here, uh, the Imperial Standard uh, in the United States. Pretty much around the world, everything else is in the metric system, but in the U.S., we use the standard system, uh, which is also referred to as the imperial system. And you'll see everything is broken down into sixteenths. So if you can count to sixteen, you can read a tape measure. The distance between every mark on this tape measure is exactly one sixteenth of an inch. So this would be five and a sixteenth, five and two sixteenths, which breaks down to five and an eighth, Five and three sixteenths, five and four sixteenths, which we would know is five and what? A quarter. Five and five sixteenths, five and six sixteenths, which six sixteenths reduces down to three eighths. Five and seven sixteenths, and then we get to five and a half, which is also five and eight sixteenths. Eight divided by sixteen is one half. So it carries on through, and all you gotta do is be able to count one sixteenth, two sixteenth, three sixteenth, four sixteenth, five sixteenth all the way up to 16 sixteenths, which would be six. So fairly simple to read once you learn it, not a whole lot to it. A couple other marks I want you to notice on here. You'll notice that every 16 inches is marked in a red box. So 16 inches, 32 inches, 48 inches, 64 inches, every 16, there's a red box. And there's a reason for that. That's how studs are laid out in a wall, okay? That's how floor joists are laid out. That's how rafters are laid out. Everything is laid out on 16 inch centers and that just helps you find that 16 by looking for that red box. One other thing on here and I'm gonna point out real quickly, and I didn't learn this till I've been in the business for quite a while, but if you look right here, just over the 19th mark, there's a little diamond. You see it? For the longest time, I thought that was just a paint defect on the tape measure. Before I came to realize that those diamonds, if you look at 38, you'll notice it's spaced out a little bit further. You go another 19 inches, 57, see how the diamond is moving down? All right, that's because that diamond is actually set on 64s. So it's set at, uh, I believe it's 19 and 664. So it just keeps adding and adding and adding as it goes down through the roof, okay? Those are used for laying out eye joists. So anytime you're gonna work with man-made lumber like an eye joist, and we'll talk about that at a later date, you would lay those out on center on diamonds, which would be every 19, 664. Okay, and that pretty well sums it up for our tape measure lesson today. Glad to have you. Hope you measure up.